So we already saw that these numbers are equal. We were able to convert them from decimal to binary. And we could then convert these binary numbers into octal, say, by finding groups of three bits. or hexadecimal by looking for groups of four bits. We can also convert directly from decimal to octal or decimal to hexadecimal. And we're going to use the same procedure that we did before. We're just going to be working with a different base. So if I start with my 13.625, And I'm going to break my number into two parts, and I'm going to work with the whole number part. So 13 in octal is 8 plus 5, so that will be 15. Now I'll deal with my fractions separately. So I'm going to use the multiplication method. I'm just going to take my fraction, and I'm going to continue multiplying by my base, which will be 8. So Point six two five times eight. Sixteen plus four gives me twenty. Forty eight plus two gives me fifty. So point six two five times eight is five. So I would write down the five here. And since I have nothing else here to multiply by eight, I'm done. I can stop here and I look, that's exactly what we expected from just converting the binary number directly. I can do the same thing with 6.5625, and I can convert that to hexadecimal. The 6 in decimal will turn into a 6 in hexadecimal as well. So I'm just going to keep that. Now I have the 0.5625. And I'm going to multiply this by 16 because that's my destination base. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 2 is 12 plus 3 is 15. 6 times 6 is 36 plus 1 is 37. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 3 is 33. And then 1 times 5625 is 5625. So 0.5625 times 16 is 9. So I'll write down my 9. I have nothing left here to multiply by 16, so I'm done. My result is negative 6.9. It almost matches what I've got over here, except that my whole numbers are mismatched on this side. If I change all of these to 5s, then that it's all consistent and it makes sense.